Hello, welcome to Working Dragon Mystic, where we discuss real, metaphysical, and occult knowledge so that you can manifest real and tangible results in your life. This week, we're going to be discussing a question I get a lot from viewers. Are entities real or just creations of our own subconscious mind? So stay tuned. Okay, so this week, <clears throat> going to be a little different video than I think I normally do, but it is a fantastic question. Um, in fact, it's a question I wrestled with very, very early in my magical path. Um, and I've been getting it a lot from viewers, and it showed up a few times in the comments recently, and I really just had to take the time out to do this video. I don't know how long it's going to be, because I don't know how much my two cents is worth on this topic. But I wanted to give you a few things to think on, and of course, I want to give you my personal thoughts on this. And that is, as you saw in the intro, are entities real, or are they just part of our subconscious mind that is speaking to us? Um, and that is a really hard question. Now, there's a few theories to this. Let's look at the subconscious mind first. Um, this really goes two ways. First off, um, some people view it as possible delusions. Um, possible split personality disorder. I mean, it can be viewed in a lot of psychological ways. But the ideal is that either you're talking to yourself and helping yourself work through problems and advising yourself, um, and you're picking up on information or knowledge you learned or picked up somehow and it's stored in your subconscious and you didn't know it. Um, they try to say this like you've heard the word, you saw a photograph of it, something like that in some form or fashion in order to explain where this knowledge and information came from. And it's always stored back in your subconscious, hidden back there. And by projecting it through an entity, um, such as a deity, a demon, an angel, or something some like that, you're actually creating a construct of your subconscious and therefore pulling from that reservoir of um, knowledge that you normally wouldn't through via the construct. The second viewpoint of the subconscious is that the subconscious actually allows you to tap into the greater knowledge um, or morphic knowledge field around all humanity. And um, the basic ideal here is that there is a massive energetic consciousness that surrounds humanity. Um, or and or creatures on the planet or in similar areas. It differs from uh, person to person who talks about it. And some people actually say this consciousness is multiversal, therefore it expands through all things. And because of that, by your subconscious projecting this conscious entity, you're actually using that to tap into knowledge that someone else has and pull it through the subconscious in order to gain access to it. And the entity is therefore still a construct, construct of the subconscious of a physical being. Not a divine being, not a demon, not an angel. It's just that construct of the subconscious. And you're pulling through that. Um, of course, this would, in this ideology, still be giving you access to this information and knowledge. And you would still be able to utilize that in your own personal life. Now, of course, on the other side of the fence, we have the non-subconscious, where these entities are actually separate from you. They exist separately. They are an outside entity that you can reach out, contact, and communicate with, and actually discuss and learn things from. Now, this is debated by spiritualists and metaphysical practitioners over and over and over. I've seen occultists go round and round and round. Um, a lot of your atheist style occultists really love to subscribe to the subconscious view that you're tapping into your subconscious and the conscious field of knowledge that is produced by all mankind, all living things, all, all that. <clears throat> and that's perfectly fine. I got no problems with that viewpoint. Um, and of course, um, a big chunk of your spiritualist, especially on the religious spectrum of it, they are definitely hardcore. These entities are 100% real. And many of them even view them as more real than we are. 
and that these entities can be contacted, that you can bring them forth, you can learn directly from them, they will teach you things that you have no way of knowing in any other way. And that's their viewpoint. Now, I have met people that fall somewhere in the middle, and they're, they do constantly go back and forth on whether what they're talking to is a construct or an actual entity, and I get that. It can be complicated. Me personally, this was something I wrestled with a lot. You all know I'm a very scientifically minded person. I had a bad experience with religion growing up in general. Um, I found that it benefited a lot of people. I do see the good in religion. I see why it can be um, a beautiful thing. Um, but it wasn't for me. My brain just could not grasp that just blind, tangible faith that religions tend to ask for. And as far as results, well, I wasn't getting those. So, I, I went and studied different theologies, different belief systems and everything. And eventually I found my way into Wicca. And I know what you're saying, Drake, you don't strike me as a Wiccan. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend to bark up that pole. Uh, I found Wicca and I began to study it, its philosophies and its ideals and magic. From Wicca, I began to study different areas of ceremonial magic. I found DJ Conway's books, God Bless Her Heart. Um, and I'm thankful I did because she's the one who led me into meeting the dragons. And the dragons really, really guided my path very heavily from that day forward. Um, including introducing me to Odin and Freya. Um, <clears throat> now... How do I know they're real or how do I know they're a subconscious thing? And I wrestled with that because um, one person pointed out that Odin and Freya called to me and I knew nothing about them. But these entities were talking to me and telling me things about them and teaching me things. Even that went against certain books I found. Um, which I found was actually just bad books. And they're like, how would you have known that truth without that? Well, if you're going by that energetic consciousness... And energy is something that exists in science. Someone out there somewhere knows that information about Odin and Freya. So that could easily be it. I'm pulling from that. Um, and then there's the ancestral consciousness concept. And though I didn't know it at the time, I did find out I do have a very, very deep and strong ancestral roots um, to the Norsemen. And that was pretty cool to me. Um... My wife decided she wanted to do one of those DNA tests. I didn't know what to expect. Um, I actually thought my background would be somewhat boring. So I was not expecting that. I do remember one of my grandfathers said was Irish, German, and Italian. Um, ironically, the Irish was in there. Um, and there was some German. There was no Italian, though. I saw no Italian. So I think it was a little off there. But I think it was, yeah, 80% was up there in those Nordic lands, Germanic cultures, which to me was cool. That was something I didn't know. But that aside, that didn't necessarily make these entities real because you have this other theory, this other possibility to that question. And I was going back and forth on that. So what happened? I eventually started asking myself, what was my problem with the church? And it was the lack of results. I never saw anything. No matter how much I believed, no matter how much I did, no matter how much ritual, footwork, whatever you want to call it, prayer, I didn't see results. Um, so, I decided to set aside this argument for a time and approach these entities one-on-one -on -one as if they're real and see if I get results. Let's approach it that way. Let's go at it. Let's see what happens. Because I had deducted if the subconscious concept is true, why didn't I see results in the church? Because there's plenty of Christians all throughout the world, plenty of people of faith that I should be able to utilize the subconscious theory through. But I never got results. So I figured that one had already had many years of good, solid testing to it. So let's apply some of that solid testing to the other side of the fence and keep a good journal and notes upon that and see what happens. But 
What ended up happening is I did. I started working with the dragons. I started working with Odin. I started working with Freya. And I started working with them with the same direct personal connections as I would with any person. And I sought to get to know them. I was asking them questions about themselves, their personality traits. And I was really getting writing notes, getting to know these entities one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I started seeing results so freaking quick. I mean, within the first week or two, I was actually starting to see a change in my life that was tangible and noticeable, not theoretical. Um, and that, that was a big deal for me. For me, that was a big deal for me. Let me point that out directly because I had spent my entire life in a belief system, working with an entity or being, never saw results. Now, I am applying myself to an entity and a being, its wisdom, its teachings, and I'm seeing results. This was a dramatic shift for me. So when I sat back down, I think it was like a year later, to review my notes and recompare my thought processes and my journals that I'd made while struggling with this, I found out for me, these entities are very, very real for me. And every time I, the question pops up in my mind, I come back to they have to be real because in my experience, I've seen nothing that can truly hold up that subconscious concept that explains every experience. It can explain a lot. It can explain a lot. I don't deny that completely. It can explain a lot. But it doesn't seem to be able to explain every experience I personally have had. And then I was meditating on it. And I was meditating on what one is true. And I got an interesting tidbit of insight and this is the biggest takeaway the hugest takeaway I hope you do take away from this video does it matter interesting thought because my entire philosophy my entire life was based on results it was based on manifestation of change bettering oneself and actually seeing results from the work you put in so the question then popped up if you're practicing your craft if you're practicing your magic if you're practicing your spirituality um, if you're practicing your philosophy if it is yielding results that are bettering you building you up and shaping your life to give you the life and results and help you meet the goals you want to meet. Does this question really matter? Um, I remember watching a few YouTube videos of a gentleman named, I think it was TH or DH Thorne. Um, he's made a few comments that makes me think he leans more to the subconscious side of it. I actually want to read some of his books and get to understand his views a lot better. But his craft works. Does that make him wrong? I say no. I say it doesn't matter. Um, I say answer this question for you personally. Find the answer in your heart. Find the one that truly makes sense to you, whether it be in your heart or your mind. Um, many of you know I'm more of a logical, mental person, so it had to make more sense here than here for me. Um, well, I guess here. Sorry. Um, but... If you're getting the results, I'm not sure it matters. Because you are still getting the results. You're still learning. You're still growing. You're still shaping those. But if you have to answer this question for yourself, if this question really bugs you like a splinter in your brain, the way it did me, the way it did me, attempt both. Give both an equal try. Um, take a few months. Apply yourself to one thought process record all your results for that time. Then take three months, record all your results for that time. And compare and contrast them and see if they give you any understanding. Also meditate on your experiences of the two and find out which one feels real. 
Sometimes that's the biggest thing. Which one is it that truly feels real to you? I'm not going to sit down and I'm not going to argue with a psychologist. Um, I mean, Carl Jung and them are so much more smart than me. Clear heads down. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to sit down and have coffee and um, pitch ideologies back and forth to some of these psychologists. Um, Jordan Peterson, Carl Jung if you, um, would be an interesting one. Um, I mean, Freud, 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 let's be honest. Freud would be just an interesting guy because some of his theories. <laughs> so, but just because someone thinks differently or has different views or thinks what I do is strictly mental constructs, um, in my imagination or my subconscious, those kinds of things, it don't bother me. I would actually love to sit down and discuss these philosophies from just that, a philosophical viewpoint and find common ground. I think that's one of the more beautiful things is that there is still common ground between the two viewpoints. Um, but find the one that is the more real to you. Find the one that does feel real to you. That's what I did. It was a long and hard um, road. It took me time to do. But by all means, do it if this question bugs you, if it's a splinter in your mind the way it was me. I Believe me, it bugged the tar out of me. I couldn't let it go. I tried. Um, and that's why I did what I did. Honestly, I had one of my students, um, she full out did an entire year. She dedicated six months to one side of the question, six months to the other side of the question. She went all out in her notes, her ideologies, the questions she was asking. She was trying to isolate different factors. I mean, the amount of notes this girl took, she turned it into one of the best metaphysical research projects I've seen from a student. And in the end, her conclusion, ironically enough, stated, I believe these entities are absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, real, tangible, and separate from me. But I also see why Drake, actually now that he too has found the answer, asks, does this question really matter? And that, in some ways, is the annoying part. Because once you have the answer, once you understand the answer, once you find the one that's real for you and that splinters out, it's easy to look over and be like, why was this a big deal? But when that splinter's there bothering the piss out of you, oh, it's a big deal. The question's not the big deal. It's that little splinter that's just annoying and you can't get it out of your head. Um... But for me personally, in my personal practice, I do truly believe these entities are very, very real. And they're not just parts of our subconscious that were created. Um, that is my personal view after all these years and stances. And I do. I do still go back and review my notes and meditate on this question. But after all these years, my stance hasn't changed. That does not mean in any shape, form, or fashion that I put down those who believe it is a subconscious thing. Like I said, it's your path, it's your practice, it's your magic. If it is yielding the results you are looking for, keep at it. Keep on manifesting the life you want. Keep being the best you you can be. Keep growing. Keep being awesome. Alright, that's my two cents on this matter. I know it's a topic I've been getting a lot of questions about, so I did want to cover it. And I know this gets a little bit more psychological than magical in some areas. So it's not really like my normal videos. But I do think it's a good question every practitioner really should ask themselves. I really do. Now with that, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button to let YouTube know you like the work we're doing. Getting all this information out to the seekers who are trying to learn. So that the algorithm keeps telling, putting these videos up for people who's looking. So they can find them, see them. Share them on your social media, by all means, um, feel free to. And hit that bell icon so you're notified any time we post a new video or we go live. We do live streams um, every Friday and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We come in, we hang out, we have a few good laughs. I answer questions, I answer as many as I can. I do miss them sometimes, so I apologize. Um, also, there's a link in the About section for a Discord channel. Um, it's a pretty good community. We try to answer questions and support each other's research there the best we can. Um, as long as you come in, be friendly, 
Don't start trouble and follow the rules. It's a wonderful community, and actually we've been very, very blessed with the people who have come in. Very good people indeed. Um, and I want to thank everyone in the Discord server, my admin especially. I couldn't run that server without them. It wouldn't be there without them, hands down. And my viewers, this channel, this channel would not be happening without you all. Um, many of you know, I started the channel as to see if it worked. And it has, and I get so many wonderful messages from you all. And it really keeps me encouraged to keep doing the work we're doing. And actually on that, make sure you drop us a comment below, say hello, um, and actually answer the question yourself, um, if you have the answer. Which side of the fence of this question are you on? Um, don't let it turn into an argument. Don't turn it into an argument. That is not what it is. Everyone is everyone's response and answer to this question is valid. Do not turn it into an argument. I will delete your comment, and if you keep it up, I will ban you. Simple, easy peasy. Uh, so let's keep it civil, people. All right. With that, everyone, I'm Drake. This has been Working Dragon Mystic, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.